Welcome back to Prey Moon Crash. It's time to do the final objective, which is do the story objective for Andreas. Looks like our memory marker is inside of a place where we were, well, imprisoned, our cell. I'm sure there's going to be a poltergeist over here. Hello, buddy. What do I want to do with you? You know, this might actually reach to the other side. Oh, that's actually a really big range. Yeah, hmm. I triggered my own trap. I'm surprised it didn't trigger it. I guess it needs line of sight. Interesting. Let's spend my narrow mods on Backlash 2. So it still lasts for 20 seconds, but protects against two enemy attacks instead of just one. Figure it's a good idea to focus on survivability since my health is incredibly low. Papa? Papa. It's me. Alexei. We can be together again. But you have to do what I say. It's very important. Okay, Papa? There's something... Something you have to do for me. For us. So we can be together. It's what you want. You have to find... My toy. You missed my birthday. Missed so many. I think about you and my toy all the time. Remember, it's what you want. Find my toy. Whoa, we just instantly went to corruption level four. Damn. Okay. So was this... I wonder, was this how the uh, outbreak started? Or did this happen after the outbreak started and that's how the telepath got to me and convinced me to... I'm, I'm assuming I'm going to be helping the Typhons do something. You are a Typhon. True. Thankfully I have an EMP. Well, I've also got this. What is this toy? I'm unnerved by the lack of the moon shark. Wait, I see it over there, but it for some reason hasn't detected my presence, which is very strange. Should have detected my presence by now. Oh, Jesus. Connected blast. That should be fine. We found it. Yeah, so I gotta remember, turrets will attack me. I wonder why this security operator, though, was shooting a laser at, I think, this thing? I've never seen that happen before. Also, my view keeps like, like, it's like there's an earthquake or something. I'm not hearing any sort of an earthquake type sound, but my character's view keeps like wobbling every once in a while. That must mean something. Given how weird things are, I think I'm going to stop cutting as much as I usually have been. 
So I'll show you the whole process because things seem a little bit different. Did I miss it? Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. Is that my friend? What the hell? I'm... I'm working on behalf of the Typhons. I'm under their mind control. I'm working on their behalf. I guess that's communicated with all the other Typhon organisms. Nothing is an enemy to me except turrets and stuff like that. I'm so sorry, Phantom. Strange. Yeah, so we're just, we're good with everybody. Piloting Connectome. Don't think I'll be needing that. Yeah, so like you, stop it. I didn't do much. That was better. Yeah, I don't think fire is very good against him. I had a working gun. Mine's broke. Papa, why did you make a deal with those men? Is it what you wanted? You wanted to be far away? No. You wanted. You wanted us to not perish. else I can use against it. I mean, I could shock it with this. That's cool, I guess. I guess I could just beat it with a wrench. <laughs> if I, like, lift it up, maybe it wouldn't be able to attack. That might work. Oh, Jesus. That's interesting. Um, so I don't think it, the lifter thing actually itself hurts me. I think it just lifted me up so fast into a solid object that it was considered me like bashing into it. Anyway, toy. Funny, it looks like an actual toy, but I'm sure that's just an illusion, right? You found it. My toy. Take it to the spaceships. The little ones. It's what you want. This is Joan Winslow, personal diary, install day two. Working out kinks. Version 3.27. Sentry software has been patched. Diagnostics look good. Previous flaws in targeting seem to be gone. I've retired Gene and make a pwn, but Helen, Karen, Opal, and Bonnie Parker all got the upgrade. They are shooting straight. I think this new one here is gonna break convention. I'm gonna call him Brian. Hey, Joan, you got a sec? Shay needs your help with one of the harvesters. Okay, yeah. Let me just turn this off. It's so cute that you ran names, the turrets. <sighs> Oh god, there's a nightmare here. Thank god it's my friend. So we're going to the escape pod in the Pythias Labs. I'm probably going to need a navigation ship, right? 
You're so close. So close to me and Mama. You have to put my toy in the spaceship. Memory corruption there. Interesting. I haven't seen visual memory corruption in a long time. Alright, looks like it's fine. Um, do I have to just literally drop it, or should I escape? Escape in the escape pod with Alexei's toy. Okay. Oh, Papa. I'm going to be so happy with my toy. I'm so proud of you. So proud of you. So proud of you, Papa. The telepath controlling you exploded your head. Peter, this has to be shot. I want to thank you for all you've done. You don't have much time, so good luck to you. Don't have much time. What's the plan? Peter, we've never spoken. I'm the OC at Casmacorp overseeing your unit. Mm. Basilisk reports to me. You've done brilliant work for us. Thank you. Unfortunately, budgets are tight and we just can't afford to pick you up. We're going to honor the contract, though, and send your completion bonus to your family. Thank you again, Peter. We'll make it quick. My good brother. <laughs> Pleasantly worded message from management. Sorry, we can't pick you up. You're just gonna die now, but we'll take care of your family. Goodbye. Oh my god, that is just so absurdly horrible. Alright, so that's what the backup O2 is for, because they are going to remotely kill me by killing my oxygen. But I have a backup. Maybe I go here? I don't really know. Command key. Wait, wait, wait. Am I supposed to have a command key? I don't have much time. Is there a command key? I don't see anything shining. Oh! I can't see. I can't see. Warning. Vital signs. Oh. I guess. I mean, there's nothing else I can do, right? I can run the slideshow of pictures of my family. That won't help. This control panel has nothing on it. I can't... Oh, can I take this? Oh! Oh. I thought that was... I didn't know that that was, like, actually O2 that I could use on me personally. I thought it was, like, O2 for the whole ship. I see. Now I got time to relax. So I guess I'll just decommission it? It'll say, yeah, you got enough resources to do that, that's fine. Meanwhile, I'll just be on it. Yeah, Earth still doesn't work. So, this operation is terminal. Are you sure? Yes. So Peter's going to land on the moon. So I get to go to Pythias.
Let's finish out with some thoughts on Prey Mooncrash. That was probably the most interesting DLC for a game I've ever played. Granted, I don't play that many DLCs, but typically they're usually just more of the same, which is usually perfectly fine. But this really goes above and beyond that. I imagine part of why it was made in this way is maybe because of limited resources, because the original Prey apparently did not sell all that well. And also, this DLC came out more than a year after the original Prey was released, which is strange. Don't DLC usually come out much sooner? So I wonder if it had maybe some trouble development, perhaps because of a lack of resources. I don't know, I'm just speculating when it comes to that. But um, if they were limited for resources, then they made very good use of their limited resources. Because not only does it involve mostly the same assets from the original Prey, there's definitely some unique stuff, but the majority of it is reused because it's, it is a new environment, sort of, but most of the environment, especially the indoor locations, are very similar to stuff that was in the original Prey. So most of those assets get to be reused. They also did a great job of making the roguelike gameplay structure fit with having to explore the same environment again and again. Because probably about halfway through or so, I had pretty much been almost every single place. It's mainly just the crater and then the three hub areas coming off from that. It's, it's you know, fairly large, but it's not huge. It doesn't take all that long to explore everything. And the roguelike nature of it keeps it interesting because you're always playing as different characters who have very different abilities. They move entirely differently, they attack entirely differently, and some of them can actually go to areas that others can't. Like Claire can hack and get into places that way. Joanne Winslow can repair things and repair doors, get uh, grav shafts up and going and things like that. So depending on the character you play as, and also just whatever random elements it happens to have generated for that particular run, plus other variables like the corruption level, all sorts of different variables, it means every time you go through an area, you're going to be looking at it differently, you're going to be looking for different resources, you're going to be attacking differently, you're going to be moving differently, you're going to be able to access some areas differently. It's just a great way to reuse the same environments in interesting ways. The fact that it forces you to play all these different ways also made me appreciate Prey even more than I did and I already appreciated it a lot, I love the original Prey, but I chose to play it originally as a completely non-Typhon character. I didn't get a single Typhon ability, 100% Typhon free, and that was a deliberate story choice. But it might not have been the best thing for really exploring the different, uh, like all the multitude of, of ways you can approach situations in Prey. I still had some different options at my disposal, but I was much more limited without any Typhon abilities. So this made me appreciate just how complex and systemic Prey is. There's a lot going on. It's a very simulation-heavy kind of, I don't know, action, adventure, RPG, something, whatever you'd call it. And I like the sort of set dressing that they put over that roguelike gameplay structure to make it seem more believable while you're actually like, why are why am I able to play as different characters and reset the simulation? Like they came up with this whole, you're analyzing a data structure and I guess an imperfect data structure and trying to sort of reconstruct it to come up with this excuse for why you're able to play as these different characters that were partially recorded and why it becomes more corrupted and you can reset it. And I don't think they ever came up with an explanation for why there's space bucks while you earn space bucks and can purchase equipment. I don't think they ever explained that one, but they do a pretty good damn job of making it feel plausible and not really goofy and weird. Also, the gradual unraveling of the different stories for the different characters was, again, a really nice way to tie in the roguelike elements with uh, an unfolding story, because it's so non-linear. I mean, the original Prey is already pretty non-linear, but this is even more so. You really could approach it and unlock things in very different orders, but they kind of segmented it out into these different quests where you have unlocking the story objective and then doing the story objective for all five characters so that's sort of like 10 main quests right there plus you got us you got the sort of even bigger quest that's i guess sort of in the foreground but also sort of in the background of what's happening with peter in between these simulation runs and the growing concern over what's going to happen with them when their indentured servitude is quote unquote complete really cleverly designed so that has been Prey Mooncrash. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and thanks for watching.